Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald, and good evening, everybody. Well, the Brexit games go on, all sorts of amendments being put down, all sorts of thoughts as to what's going to happen next Tuesday when we reach another big milestone in this whole great saga. And I'm particularly keen tonight to talk about the position of Jeremy Corbyn. Now, uh, what people have said is his stance on Brexit has been one of constructive ambiguity, namely, get leavers in the north to vote for you by promising and saying you want to leave and, and saying the single market would be rather like staying in the European Union, whilst at the same time getting Remain voters in London and elsewhere to still vote for you. And in many ways, you could argue he's played the game quite well um, and he stood back and he's watched the Tory party rip themselves to bits on the issue. But it's worth remembering that Jeremy Corbyn himself, who first entered Parliament back in 1983, was a Benite. And Tony Benn was one of the big leaders of the campaign in 75 to take the UK out of the, of the as it was then, European Economic Community. And all those 32 years, until he became le leader of the Labour Party, Corbyn voted against every single European treaty, saying it was bad for British democracy. And that's why, as leader of the Labour Party, he's always been resisting a second referendum. I mean, here he was on the Andrew Marr show last year. Why is the Labour Party not in favour of a second referendum? What we've asked for and demanded in Parliament has been a um, meaningful vote in Parliament at the end of it. So MPs but I'm talking about the people go, deciding, go, 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 not Parliament. We're not asking hmm. for a second referendum. We're, we're not, not asking for a second that's, referendum. That's right. OK. He couldn't be clearer, could he? We're not asking for a second referendum. But what you've seen and what we've commented on here again and again is the pressure within the Labour Party to push for a second referendum despite the fact the majority of Labour seats in England voted Leave, the Labour Party has increasingly been dominated by a metropolitan elite based in London. And they want this second referendum, and the pressure's there. So now we see an amendment has gone down from the Labour Party next week uh, saying people should be able to vote on a range of options. One, to get a permanent customs union, and the other to push for a second vote. Now, Corbyn himself has not as yet said that he will back that push for a second vote. But, folks, what he's done today, through that Labour amendment, he's allowed the door to be opened much wider for the possibility of Parliament voting for a second referendum. And I want to know tonight, and I'm particularly keen to hear from Labour supporters, you know, come on, tell me, has your leader made the right decision, the right decision for the country and, indeed, the right decision for the Labour Party if it faces a general election. And if you think, yep, Labour needs to become a full Remain party backing a second referendum, then call 0345 973 or maybe you think this is just about the last thing I want to hear from the Labour Party. You know, do you realise, folks, five million people who voted for Corbyn in 17, had voted Brexit the year before it could wreck us. And tell me, you know, we constantly hear about divides in the Conservative Party. Does this potentially split the Parliamentary Labour Party from much of its own base? And if you think that, please tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And of course, watch us on Facebook and comment there too. Very keen to hear from Labour voters. I'll hear from anybody, but Labour voters, Labour supporters in particular. Marilyn is a first-time caller from Bexley. Good evening, Marilyn. Uh, good evening, Nigel. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I just can't believe what I'm hearing today, um, that he's actually calling for a second referendum. It's, well, it's well, well, he's... That's actually, that's yeah. actually gone against Europe all of these years. He has, yep. He has, and he promised... You know, a couple of years ago, when we had another election, we all voted again to stay within what the referendum, whether people have got to stand up for what the democracy is. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Now, how he can go against that again, if people really, two years ago, did not want that, then they should have voted for the Liberals. That actually said they were going yes. to stay in Europe. Yes, and they had a very clear position, Marilyn. Marilyn, yep. tell me, tell me. You know, I mean, are you a Labour supporter normally? Yes, I am. Okay. Have you always been Labour? Yep, I have. 
Okay. Grew up throughout the factory years. <laughs> right. No, no, no. no. I just, I mean, I, there's a lot of things they were for and against. And I just, I can't understand, and you probably will be able to explain this better, that for his, in his manifesto, that he wants to privatise, like, rail, Mm-hmm. Isn't that well, against what you nationalise it? Sorry, um, isn't that against what the European can't, uh, the European yeah, yeah, allows yeah, yeah, against? Yeah. So can't it's be a done. contradiction. Can't it's be a done. Contradiction. Can't be done under isn't EU it? rules. But he knows that, Marilyn, and he's always so, been. He's always been a Eurosceptic. But yeah. the fact is, he's being pushed into this by his own parliamentary party. He's being pushed into this by the big trade unions that fund well, the Labour Party. Therefore, what this country really needs. On either side, to be honest, a leader, of, of somebody with aspirations for this country and a self-belief and to carry this country forward. Um, because either one of them, really, I think it's going to destroy politics on either side because it's dividing well, everything Marilyn, going I, forward. Marilyn, I, listen, I think this whole situation has the ability to completely change our established political parties. So, lifelong Labour voter, Marilyn, grew up with it. Um, <laughs> what, I mean, what on earth, if, if it became the official Labour Party position, and we're getting, we, oh. we, we, we got a bit closer today, if it became the official Labour Party position to push for a second referendum, to become a Remain party, would you vote for somebody different, or would you just stay at home? Uh, I would vote for something different, because this is bigger than, like, every four years. Do you know what? You know, to, I couldn't. To, to you, I couldn't agree with that particular statement more. This is much bigger than who wins the next election. Much bigger than who governs for the next few years. Much bigger than what tax rates are in the short term. It's about the future of our nation. Marilyn, fascinating phone call, and thank you very much for calling LBC. Well, there you go. There's a lifelong Labour person can't believe what she's hearing. There's more of them out there than people realise. Hi, Nigel. It might win votes in Islington, but a second referendum is not going down well in Darlington. Most people want a WTO now. Chris in Darlington. It's really interesting, isn't it? And we saw this last night, and we saw this with Question Time last week in Derby. We saw this with the Sky News debate that took place in Leeds. The north of England, the Labour heartlands of the north of England, are the ones that are now saying, WTO now, no deal, no problem. And I think this does present a huge problem for a Labour party that is beginning to look, to me at least, very disconnected from much of its voting base. If you're in the Labour party and you think I've got this completely wrong, it's 0345 606973. Corbyn is repeating the process agreed at conference. He is. Well, uh, you'll see, yeah, 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 suits Nigel to play the Labour has betrayed you card. Look, folks, you're right. He was pushed into this at the Labour Party conference. This of itself is not a huge surprise, but it's going to get voted on in, well, if, if, of course, it's accepted by Mr Burko, which it will be, it's going to get voted on in the House of Commons next week. David is calling from Nottingham. Good evening, David. Hi, Nigel. So... Is this the right thing? It's co- disgusting. I'll never... Go on. I'll never... Go on. I'll never, ever vote Labour again if, if they mess up with this, this Brexit vote. It's, it's, it's not a fight about politics no more. We live in a democracy, or we're meant to anyway. And it just doesn't seem to be the case. So, David, have you been a Labour voter? Yes. Oh, yeah. And, and, and this is just a bridge too far, as far as you're concerned? Definitely. I mean, it's, it's a democracy. It's, it's, not about, it's not about whether you vote Conservative or Labour. It's a fight for democracy. The EU are just bullying the UK, and, and, and like idiots were just bowing down to them. But, but, David, if Corbyn stood up to his parliamentary party on this EU issue, they might just do their best to get rid of him. Well, it doesn't matter. At least he'll stand for his own principles, because him himself is a Brexiteer. Well, of course he's a Brexiteer. We all know he's a Brexiteer. Right, so Corbyn, really, you, you're feeling a bit let down, aren't you, David? Very. Very interesting. Yeah, but not, not, not just by, by, by all, every single one of them MPs in there wow. are not doing their job. <laughs> you know, 498, I know I've said this a hundred times in the last three days, but 498 of them voted for Article 50, and now they're turning their back on it. David, thank you. Well, two very passionate Labour callers. I get this message by SMS. I was a Labour member for nearly 40 years, but left because of their addiction to the EU and mass immigration. They are now the party of the metropolitan, middle classes and minority rights. What a sellout 
of the working classes. No second referendum. And I agree with nearly all of that. This disconnect is absolutely massive. Glenn is calling from Swansea. Good evening, Glenn. Hello, Nigel. Lovely to talk to you. Welcome to you. Now, are you a Labour man, Glenn? I am a Labour man, although I, v- I voted UKIP a few times in the Assembly to push the uh, Brexit agenda, you know. Yep, yep, yep. I vote technically. But w- what I'd like to say is um, that Jeremy Corbyn has just lost the, le- the next election because he's never going to be forgiven for this. In the North and in Wales. Well, yeah, the North, the Midlands and South Wales, these are, yeah. these, these are crucial areas that Labour has dominated for a century and uh, that all voted Brexit in a big way. Glenn, he's being forced into it, though, isn't he? Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm looking for moral fibre for them, from the man, you know, because, um, of course, we put up with austerity and the rest of it, and we were looking forward to a change of government... Uh, to put things right, we've had, you know, we've got a terrible thing in Swansea with homelessness and, you know, low wages and things like that. But if you can't trust a man to implement what he said in his manifesto, are we going to be let down again, Nigel, on other shoes? Well, Glenn, you make a very fair point, and thank you. Well, there we are. Three callers so far, all lifelong Labour voters who are appalled that Jeremy Corbyn has even opened the door to a vote on a second referendum without as yet endorsing it. He's being pushed into it by his parliamentary party, but some of you seem to think he ought to stand a little bit firmer. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's now 6.15. Well, as Jeremy Corbyn opens the door to a vote on a second referendum in the House of Commons next Tuesday, what fascinates me is the Remainer position that vote remain because that's stable, that's solid, that won't change. Vote to leave, there's a risk. Well, what about this, folks? So today... Macron and Merkel, the German Chancellor, the French President, have met in Aachen and they're signing a new agreement between each other. Yes, they are going to deepen economic integration with the Franco-German economic zone. They want to develop the European Union's military capabilities to fill in the gaps in capacity. And now they're talking about the possibility of joint military deployments. That means sending their troops overseas on missions. Oh, and they, of course, want to sit jointly on the UN Security Council. Folks, the European Union is changing every month as the so-called populist revolt gets bigger and greater. And as they look ahead to the European elections, filled with fear as to what's to happen, they are doing their best to finally complete a totally undemocratic United States of Europe. Do you really, really want to stay part of that or get out before the train hits the buffers? Because that's what I think is going to happen. And this idea, vote to remain, because nothing will change and it's stable, is complete and utter tosh. Now, your message is coming in um, in big numbers. Is Corbyn doing the right thing? Has he made the right decision? I get from Lee on Twitter, I'm a Remain voter and a Labour voter. For the first time in decades, there is a proper Labour leader. But... His stance on selling out on no deal. He can get stuffed. I accept no deal. Not only that, I think it's the only way to a peaceful resolution. Well, Lee, it may be the only way that Brexit can be delivered. And what I'm sensing is all over the country, this demonised no deal option is gaining ground with every single day that goes by. Tom in Basingstoke says, Labour have lost touch with the grassroots. They will never, ever be electable again. The Tories are on a knife edge with voters. A people's party is within sight. So not just a people's vote, but a people's party to take on those who want a people's vote. And Ryan says, what a ridiculous state we're in. We have a Remainer fighting to leave and a Brexiteer now fighting to remain. I have to say, Ryan, that does really describe the completely topsy-turvy world that British politics is now in. I'm off to Richmond on Thames to speak to Rajiv. Good evening. Good evening, Mr Farage. Uh, And what a great honour to speak to you. Well, I'm very Uh, pleased to have you here, Rajiv. Yeah. Yes, I have spoken to you before. I remember. I just like to say, I just want to ask you one question. Oh, right. I was asking you questions, but go on. No, do, please. What is the meaning of leader? Uh, the meaning of leaders is to lead and often to do things that are seen to be unpopular um, and to chart a course forward. Of, uh, and, and actually, Rajiv, I would put it to you that had the Prime Minister done that, we wouldn't be in the mess we're in. Exactly. Now, I say there are people in this country, followers, and the people have no leaders. 
And, and, and you know, sometimes I think that people in this country, they have been misled into voting for leaving. And actually, I hate the word Brexiteer because, you know, if you use the word remainer, you must use the word lever. This is Brexiteer is a word that is invented and it is a very negative word. It is like, it really sounds like leaving Britain, Brexiteer, Britain. This is a very wrong word that LBC and the politicians have been allowed to use. Anyway, I'll end it that. And you know what I really do feel? A lot of people have been misled into voting for leaving. And now they're realizing the mistake they have made mm. and the mess they have got themselves into. And you know what? Sometimes people make mistakes and they are in denial. A lot of people in Conservative Party, they are in denial because they just don't want to lose face. Why can't they face reality and say to the people that what are the consequences of leaving? Well, what, Rajiv, you hang know, on, it, hang on, hang on, Rajiv. I mean, a lot of people were misled in the referendum, hideously misled. They voted to stay part of a common market, and then it became a political union. It was the biggest lie that's ever been told in the history of British politics. So we can play that game either way. But do you think Corbyn, who's been a lifelong Brexiteer, by now gently shifting his position and allowing a vote on a second referendum. You believe that's the right thing to do, do you? You know, you know, sometimes, you know, like, like two boxers in a ring, you know, they have a fight and they, they, it's a very close decision. And then they have a rematch. So why are leavers so afraid to have a second referendum? Because, why are they so afraid? Bec you know, why because they, they voted for because it twice, Rajiv. They voted for it twice. They voted for it once in a referendum, again in a general election, 500 MPs voted for it. I mean, what is your problem with enforcing a democratic okay. result? Okay. I, I will say this to you then. I will say this to you then. Then in that case, there should be no kind of communication with Europe. There should be a total uh, no agreement. Just leave, just leave. Absolutely, like a divorce, absolutely, just leave. absolutely. Well, that, Rajiv, listen, we could go on talking about the rights and wrongs of this for a long time, but let me ask you very quickly, do you think Corbyn has made the right decision as Labour leader by opening up the door to a vote next Tuesday on the possibility of a second referendum? You know, you, you know, actually, you know, uh, to be honest with you, this is something that is a deciding factor that... Some people are actually interested in having a second referendum. Fine. To so, have a so, so Corbyn's right, is he? Well, actually, you know, he's sitting on a fence right now. Well, he, and, uh, ah, but he's, he, he shifted a bit today. He shifted more to one side of the fence. He's about to fall off uh, towards the mm. Remain camp, I think. Rajiv, le let, me, let me ask you very quickly. Are you a Labour yes, voter? Sir. No, sir. I have actually, to be honest with you, I have been... <laughs> I have been uh, a liberal and conservative, but you know, you know, Je you know, Jeremy Corbyn is trying to bring the country together, and you know what? Somebody has to decide to bring people together because people of United Kingdom. Well, I tell you, you know, what, I tell you what, Rajiv. So I tell you what, Rajiv. The more they try and stop the result of the greatest democratic exercise in the history of this nation, the more they're dividing us, Rajiv. Lovely to talk to you. Off to Coventry, to Chris, the first-time caller. Welcome, Chris, to LBC. Uh, so thank you, Nigel. Uh, is it OK if I call you Nigel? Of course it is, Dubai. Now, cool. tell me, are you a Labour man? Um, I've been a Labour member for four or five years. OK. Um, I'm not going to say I'm a hardcore kind of Labour supporter. Or my family are all Labour supporters, that kind of thing. But I'm a Labour member, yes. Yep. And has Corbyn... I mean, clearly, Corbyn is kind of giving in isn't he i mean he had to give in at the conference and this is a follow-on from that and it's the keir starmers and people like that that are really dominating the public labor debate do you think he's done the right thing um yeah i well uh Corbyn's position seems to be a little bit ambiguous he said he was sort of 70 percent in favor of the eu he said he voted to remain and he would again mm, but yeah. nonetheless he we seems to behave in a way that seems to be not either actually he's maybe just for favor brexit but if you look at the what the the, the polls show of the Labour membership, um, the Labour membership is is strong, and Labour voters are strongly in favour of 
um, remaining in the EU under, of a, under uh, a majority in favour of a second referendum. So I think as someone who professes to the, uh, uh, someone who listens to the membership of this party, I think he's right in moving towards the position of of uh, of mm. Uh, mm. keeping this uh, well a pe- uh, another another vote or oh, a people's vote. I think you make a, a, a well, no, 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 no. We had the people's vote, Chris, but but I think you make a good point that the Labour membership, uh, you know, would now appear to be very, very much in favour of Remain. But there is a difference, is there not, between the Labour membership and a vast chunk of the Labour voters. And I'm talking particularly, Chris, about marginal seats in the Midlands, marginal seats in the north of England, marginal seats even these days in Wales. And, Chris, I'm going to put this to you, uh, that if Corbyn goes fully down this route, Labour uh, will really seriously damage their chances at the next election because there are five million people out there who are Labour voters and a lot of them very strong Brexiteers. Well, I think perhaps the... I'm not sure if what, what poll has been done on this, but I think Labour voters as a whole are, 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 are pro-Remain, I think. Um, and, and also, we, we're kind of in a bit of a... But it, uh, when, when people voted in the, in the referendum, they voted for uh, the, the Leave option. But the, the option, as you know, wasn't clearly defined. If you go on the look at the vote the website site at the time, it implied would remain in the single market. No, 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 no. Chris, never, 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 Chris, never, Chris, every single, every single leading proponent of leave and remain said a vote to leave is leaving the single market. That surely we can agree on. Well, I've, I've, I think I've got the text from the website uh, on my, my photo, and it says uh, a photo on my as a photo on my phone. It says the well, I can read the text to you. Uh, what website? Uh, Whose website? Uh, this was from... wasn't my website. I can promise you. It was the uh, root leave. Uh... So it says there is a free trade zone, well, free trade zone stretching all the way from Iceland to the Russian border. We will still be a part of it after we vote leave. It also says taking back control is a careful change, not a sudden step. We will negotiate the terms of a new deal before we start any legal process to leave. So I mean, it's. Well, that's not the same as... Chris, I, I mean, let's not split hairs. Let's not, let's not split hairs. But, but, you know, Boris Johnson, Michael Gove, others are part of that campaign. We're pretty clear on it. Chris, you think Corbyn's done the right thing, yeah? Um, I, 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 yes, I think so. Okay. for Labour if they back to referendum. Fine. No, OK, Chris. And Chris, they're speaking as a paid-up Labour member, believes it's the right thing because a majority of Labour members think it's the right thing, and there is an absolute logic to what he says. Trouble is, what about the voters? You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It's now 6.30. And as the Labour Party, including Jeremy Corbyn, move towards the position of wanting a second referendum, I'm asking you whether he's done the right thing. And it appears that Labour paid-up members think he has, but a lot of voters don't. Interesting, isn't it? We always talk about the splits in the Tory party on this, but they're there in Labour to be in no doubt. Now, during the referendum, one of the big issues was wages. Because those of us that supported Brexit have been saying, well, for over 10 years, actually, that a massive oversupply in the labour market caused by open borders meant wages had gone down. And famously, Stuart Rose, business boss, who was at the time one of the leaders of the Remain campaign, was interviewed by the Treasury Select Committee about wages, and he said this. If free movement were to end following Brexit, is it not reasonable to suppose that we could see increases in wages for low-skilled workers in the UK, just just off the off the back of the economic impact of, of free movement on, on wages? And well, if you're short of labour, the price for Frank will go up. So yes, but it's not necessarily a good thing. There you go. Not a good thing. Keep the poor poor. Keep them down. Keep the bonuses big bosses. I mean, that's what he was saying, isn't it? I want my bonus. I want you to starve. Is almost what he was saying. And after that, they kept him in hiding for the rest of the referendum campaign. But of course he was right, because much of this is dictated by market forces. Well, folks, here we go. Figures out today. The number of people in work in this country has reached 32 and a half million. That's the highest number in the history of this country. All right, I get it, the population's exploding, but even so, it's not a bad figure. But here's the one that really matters. Average earnings, excluding bonuses, went up in the years of November by 3.3% 
outpacing inflation. And part of that is because since the vote, fewer people are coming in from the EU to work. Folks, it actually works. We want a sensible, balanced immigration policy. What we don't want is a total open door. And if we get that right, people on average salaries will be better off. And we should all say, hooray, in my view. And in particular, the Labour Party, you would have thought, should say hooray, because isn't it the Labour Party that's supposed to you know, support people on average incomes or lower? Seems in many ways that much of that front bench now cares more about what Goldman Sachs thinks than ordinary working people. That's my view. You can always tell me I'm wrong. 03456060973. We're up to Glasgow to speak to Julia, first-time caller. Welcome, Julie. Hiya. Thanks for taking my call. Just two very quick points. Yeah. I actually yeah. feel very, very sorry for the Labour voters because, like me, I was an SMP. I was a Labour, then became SNP. Mm-hmm. And what Corbyn has done, he has alienated the people that are not party members, including myself. Yep. He's alienated that vote that Sturgeon done to us. Sturgeon is in for a shock the next time there's a general election up here because she has alienated so many SNP non-paying party members like myself that we are left partyless up here. And is that, nobody. And, and absolutely is that Julie, nobody up here. Is, is that because of the European issue? Because the SNP are so pro-European Union? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because when we voted in 2014, we voted to leave with no shackles. In my terminology of independence, it means Mm -hmm. that you are Mm -hmm. free of any shackles, which means you're free to do whatever the country decides to do, wherever it decides to go or whatever. Nicola Sturgeon told us, you know, vote vote (coughs) Scotland, you know, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't really political before that, but I kind of came round to and thought, yeah, we could do this, we could mm-hmm, do this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we would have been out of the EU. We would have been out of the EU. And then the minute that I voted leave, like many hundreds of thousands of Scots did, and were getting forgotten about, um, is we voted to leave the European Union. In mm. my view, that means leaving the shackles, it means leaving everything. Well, That's Julie, ha- Julie, you've just exposed, you've just exposed in a couple of sentences there, the complete myth that the SNP has been based on. They talk about independence from Scotland, but they want to be part of the European Union. Yeah, and, but what concerns me more, Nigel, is my wee daughter doesn't believe in the same views I believe in. I believe in independence for Scotland, mm-hmm. as well as England, as well as Wales, as well mm-hmm. as Ireland. Mm-hmm. My daughter's in the British Army. Now, what's going to happen to my daughter, who doesn't want to be part of a European army, but has signed up for 12 years? What is she to do? Is she going to get a chance to leave, or is she going to be forced for working well, Jenny, in a nation Jenny, that she doesn't want to be involved in? If Brexit gets delivered, we will not be fully part of the European army, and I would suggest we should discourage the European army in every way and keep our reliance through the organisation called NATO, which has saved us pretty well for the last 70 years. Julie, you make the points about independence superbly. Thank you. And that's really interesting, isn't it? You know, someone there voting for what they thought was independent and then discovering later, actually, it wasn't. Edgar is a first-time caller from Norwich. Good evening, Edgar. Good evening, Nigel. Welcome to the show. So, are you a Labour man, Edgar? Yes, so in 2017, it was the first time ever I've ever voted, and I voted Labour. I voted Labour because Jeremy Corbyn was a man I thought of conviction. I thought, you know, this is a guy I believe in. However, looking at him now, I just don't believe him at all because basically my grandmother and my father voted to leave the European Union, Mm -hmm. and in 2016, I wasn't old enough to um, vote. I would have voted Remain because I thought European Union could be reformed. However, it can't. I see that now. And they're too stubborn. And I just believed, in my opinion, that we should respect the vote in 2016 because, look, we have a second referendum right now. And then let's say Remain won. I doubt it. But if Remain does win, what then? How, how would Leave voters feel? That wouldn't solve the issue. That would just be kicking it down the road. Then what about a third referendum, a fourth referendum, a fifth referendum? I just think it's ridiculous, the situation. I just think, look, we should respect the vote, get on with it, deal with it. And I think if Theresa May got rid of that backstop, literally was a bit more aggressive, held a bit more conviction, mm. then I think she would definitely get something back from Europe. And if she, does, and if she doesn't, 
look, just well, walk Edgar, away. <coughs> Edgar, if she was to get a concession on the backstop, I think it's pretty clear now that Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg, and even Nadine Dorries would probably support a very poor withdrawal agreement because they'd take the view at least it would get us out and to some extent honour the vote. Edgar, first-time voter and caller, thank you very much indeed. On Twitter I get, why do we have to vote twice to leave but only once to remain? Well, there you are. Uh, there is a lot of truth in that, isn't there? I'm an immigrant. I've lived here for 20 years and a Labour voter all my life. But to get out of the EU, that's what I want. I'll never vote Labour again, says Raj. And I get this from Alex. I voted Labour in the general election and remain. I'm sick of idiots on radio stations saying my vote was an endorsement of Brexit. Well, Alex, I can't help you, mate. You voted for a party whose manifesto was to respect the vote in the referendum and to leave the European Union. Why on earth did you vote for them if that's not what you believe in? Or is it you they had over? Well, do you know what? Actually, through the policy of constructive ambiguity, the Labour Party have been getting away with this for a very, very long time. And it's now coming to a head. And I do understand those Labour members who are Remainers who will think what Corbyn has done today is a good thing. But I really believe, in electoral terms, it will not be pretty for him. Claire is a first-time caller from Lewisham. Good evening, Claire. Hello there. Welcome. Um, thank you. <laughs> are you a Labour supporter, Claire? I am, yes. Always have been. OK. And are you happy with today or not? Um, I think that the issue for me is that this goes back a little bit further than the than the situation today. When everyone was voting initially to leave or remain, everyone was under the impression that what they were being told in terms of the leave campaign was true and accurate, particularly about where the money was going to be spent, where the money was coming from, mm -hmm. particularly the, NH the claim about the NHS money, etc., etc., and then later on, it's been found, as you know, that um, there were fabrications in the way that the campaign occurred for the Leave campaign. And for me, that's well, what about the, the Remain campaign, issue. Claire? What about the Remain campaign, no, Claire? What about, all, what about all their lies? Sides, all their lies sides. about European armies? And look, you could argue, Claire, yeah, yeah, Claire, 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 we could argue that any election that had ever been fought in history had had falsehoods told on both sides. We could make that argument. But, I mean... You know, do you do you see my argument that it's all well and good, you know, a North London-led Labour Party going for a second referendum, but it's not working for Labour voters out around much of the country? No, absolutely. But what I was going to say to expand on that is that because of the situation and the way that it occurred and all of the, as you said, the lies and the fabrications on both sides, mm. I think that what needs to be put forward is an opportunity for the people to vote on what is being proposed because ultimately the outcome of it is going to affect our everyday lives. So if the fact is that the decision is to leave yep. and the fact that there, um, there was fabrication on the leave side, there was fabrication on the remain side, etc., etc., maybe the best thing is for the people to vote on what is actually being proposed so that we have a right to say whether we're happy with that because ultimately so, we are the ones in our everyday so, lives that so, are going to have to deal so with these a, consequences. A vote, Claire, a referendum, Claire, on how we leave, yeah? Yes, on how we leave okay. and if we're comfortable with that so that we know what we're getting ourselves right. into rather than politicians making decisions for us right. who don't well, necessarily know what our everyday lives are like. It may come to that, Claire. I hope it doesn't, but it may come to that. Thank you. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC at 6.45. There is a shift in Corbyn's position on a second referendum. And Mark on Facebook quite correctly says Labour are not calling for a second referendum. They are saying that if a deal cannot come out of majority in Parliament, there should be a public vote. Yes, but they're putting down a series of things to vote on next week, including a permanent customs union or the option will be there for Parliament to vote on having a second referendum. And yes, that may be at the end of the process. But Mark, it is a big shift in Corbyn's position. I'm not pretending he himself is endorsing this at this stage, saying that he will vote for it, but he has opened the door to it. Now, a story that Remainers will really have a go at is James Dyson. He, of course, who supports Brexit, and he's announced today that he's moving the headquarters of his firm to Singapore from Malmesbury in Wiltshire. The reasons that he's given are that he's selling more products now in the Far East than he's selling in the UK and the European Union. And, of course, no doubt there's a bit of a tax benefit to doing it as well. Um, in some ways... It's quite consistent with Brexit, isn't it, really? Because the Brexiteers' point is we're living in a global economy, not in a European economy. There is a massive transfer of money, power, wealth from the West to the East and other new parts of the world, and we've got to go global for our future. But no doubt, 
the usual suspects will attack him. But when they do, as long as they attack their hero, Richard Branson, as well. Because Richard Branson, Remainer, man, of course, who wanted us to join the Euro. And let's just remember that his tax affairs have been run from a private Caribbean island, and they were run from there for many, many years. So maybe a sense of balance might be helpful. I have been a Labour supporter all my life. However, if Labour does not support Brexit, I'll never vote Labour again, says Peter. What would the financial cost be to the taxpayer of a second referendum? I got on Twitter. Well, the last one cost about 130 million quid or something like that. Um, Why? Do we have to vote twice to leave, but only once to remain comes through again? A lot of you making this point that actually we could vote to leave in a second referendum and they wouldn't accept it and they'd make us vote a third time. One vote to remain, that's there for the next 50 years. That's how it seems to me. Chris is a first-time caller from Bradford. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Nigel. How are you? I am well. Now, the Labour Party is shifting its position. Do you think that's the right thing? I do, Nigel. I'm a Labour voter, um, yep. and I voted knowing what their stance was on Brexit and delivering Brexit, which I still agree with. But what Corbyn's shown for me uh-huh. is a little bit of compromise. And looking at this shambles that we're watching up onwards from outside of Westminster, I'm thinking, thank God someone's showing some compromise. Because it seems like everyone's there in Westminster with a head in the sand, but no one's make, making any compromise on anything. And look where we are now. Well, so I think at least Corbyn's showing some sort of compromise to try and get things moving. Do you think, Chris, that opening the door to a second referendum uh, is, is actually going to clear the air on this? Well, I think if we put it to Parliament, the people that we put in there, to say, do we need a second referen- referendum? Because we've voted, we've voted leave as a, as a nation, and this is what you're doing. You, can't, you clearly cannot deliver what you said you would deliver. So do we need to go back to the public to say, look, this is Mm. what we can deliver. Mm. This is what we actually can deliver. Is this what you want? Because, Nigel, with all respect, with all due respect, Theresa May's deal is not what you promised us. It certainly is. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I'm appalled by her deal, Chris. Why should we accept this as a public, Nigel? Why should we accept this? Well, well, Chris, 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 hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, Chris. 500 MPs voted for Article 50. Article 50 says you negotiate and agree a withdrawal agreement or failing that you just leave, meaning on WTO terms. What is wrong, Chris? What is wrong with us just leaving in 67 days' time? The issue for me is that this w- the WTO terms haven't been laid out to the public. What does that mean for me, Nigel? What does that mean for our citizens living in Europe, in, in well, the well, EU? Well, Chris, what, as, what I, said night, as, as I said last night, as I said last night, I mean, Portugal, for example, have unilaterally said, if you're British living here, you continue, and just to sort of put a bit of icing on the cake, there'll now be a Brits-only lane at Faro Airport. The reality, Chris, is life will go on. The only difference would be on a WTO deal that we'd put some tariffs on their goods, they put some tariffs on our goods, and we'd be free. We'd save £39 billion, and we could re-establish our links with the world. Chris, I'm positive about it, but it seems that it seems that Westminster is horrified by it. But what I, the sense I get, Chris, is there's an increasing number of the public saying if it's the only way to cleanly deliver the referendum result, shouldn't we just do it? Well, for that, I understand why they're saying that. But for me, Nigel, I've heard so much codwallop from yourself and from other politicians, nothing personal, but it's it now... It sounded better, like and it. I don't, <laughs> and I don't, know, I don't know what to believe, Nigel, to be honest with you. So, with WTO terms, this Chris. is in Portugal, a few, a few times here and there, what does that mean for me, Nigel? And that, that's what, Chris, that's we'll, what my issue Chris, is. Chris, we'll be independent and free, and I can't put a price on that. I think freedom is valuable. But, Chris, you ask a fair point, and people are concerned. And the trouble is, I'll give an answer. Somebody else will give an answer, and we'll disagree with each other. But we would be a free, independent nation, and I think that's what we actually voted for. Peter is a first-time caller from Norfolk. Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Nigel. Are you, now, tell me, are you a Labour supporter? I am indeed. OK, thank you. And do you welcome this shift in the Labour Party's position? Well, yes, I do. I mean, the thing is, when it comes down to it, Nigel, let's face it, there were so many lies told during that thing. Yes, admittedly, from both sides. But then having said that, was you the guy that was uh, f- had that photograph... Uh, in front of a load of immigrants that weren't even from going to the EU? Was that you? Uh, 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 was... Excuse me. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. That was a photograph 
of people busting, yeah, of, what, people, of, people, like of people, of people, of people, of people. Oh, you don't want to listen. Well, I tell you what, if you don't want to listen and time is short, we'll let you go. John is a first time caller from Redditch. Good evening, John. Hello, Nigel. Uh, what I want to emphasise, and you've touched on it tonight, is the difference between Labour voters and Labour Party workers. Mm. It is a huge chasm. Mm. I've been a Labour voter all my life. Um, I've been in the AEU. I voted to stay in 75 when it was just a common market. I, I only voted UKIP to, to get us out of, the, out of Europe. Mm. Uh, my father was a Labour mayor. My brother was a Labour councillor. I had a niece who was a Labour councillor. I had a cousin who was a Labour councillor. Um, what more do I have to do? No, no, John, your credentials as a Labour man are pretty strong, I have to I, say. I would, so. <laughs> I would think so. Yet Jeremy's on the fence, and as you touched on earlier, he's slipping off the fence. Now, mm. I wouldn't mind that, providing it was slipping onto my side of the fence. But it isn't. And I want somebody on the Labour side, and unfortunately the, the Labour powers in Redditch are quite adamant to support Jeremy, not Brexiteers. And I want somebody to speak up for the four, the five million Labour voters who yep. switched back yep. from UKIP and other parties back to Labour, what got him in the position where he is now being able to decide policy. John, can I ask you, with time running out very rapidly, yes. given your great Labour lineage, would you, over this issue, consider not voting Labour at the next election? Well, I will always vote, but at the, at the next election, I hope that we're out in its own And that would make life easier. No, I agree with that. John, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Look, a lot of callers tonight, a lot of Labour-supporting callers tonight, appalled that the Labour Party is moving in this position. I know Labour members, most of them like it, but remember those five million voters. I'll be back tomorrow at six. At ten tonight, it's Tom Swarbrick. But up next, it's Ian Dale. Thank you very much, Nigel. Now